Assalamu alaikum lovelies, how are you? I am very well, alhamdulillah, albeit a little bit jet lagged and uh, kind of sleep deprived, but hey, what's new? Alhamdulillah, everything is going well. I have been missing filming for you guys. I've missed this this and the editing of the videos and the YouTube. If you follow me on social media, you will know exactly why I was MIA, although usually I do pre-film videos if I have events coming up or if I'm traveling, anything that I can foresee, at least in the near future. But this time around, it was literally physically impossible unless we cloned Amina. I thought that today, I will film a video for you. I am getting ready to go to my cousin's Walima. So I have done the makeup for you. I'm going to show you the outfit. The outfit is from BB London. I'm going to show you how I tied this hijab as well. It's very similar. In fact, I was planning on doing it how I normally tie my hijab. It's how I love wearing it. However, today I wanted to keep it lifted up a little bit more and then have a bit of a pattern going on around here to balance up not only this pattern part in the midsection of the dress, but also just to add something extra to the hijab without accessorizing it. You can see I haven't added any of my Pearl Daisy and Daisy chains. I was very close to, but I thought the dress is so bright and so beautiful. I didn't want to detract all of this with too much going on up here. So I've kept the makeup quite simple as well. It's a very lightweight base. The lips, the cheeks, everything is quite toned down and quite soft. I really wanted to just focus on the eyes themselves. It's quite thick, but not too out there, not too graphic. And I really wanted to just emphasize the winged part of the eyeliner. So I've paired it with my Monroe Flick Lashinary eyelashes. Lashinary is my new company. On it, I sell premium synthetic eyelashes. They are 100% cruelty free. They feel amazing. The quality is incredible. This was one of the first eyelashes that I developed. It's called the Monroe Flick because I was really inspired by the eyeliner that Marilyn Monroe used to have, whereby she used to have this emphasized outer corner of the eye. And that's what this eyelash replicates, that look of the emphasized outer corner, the eyes quite elongated, almost sleepy, but without making the eye look too droopy. It gives such a feminine eye shape. You will also see how I picked out my hijab. This is the caramel hijab from Pearl Daisy. We just restocked it, by the way, because you guys went crazy for it. Last time you all loved it, it sold out really quickly, so I've just restocked. I was so torn on which one to go for, but I went on this one in the end, because Hobbsy advised me to, and I thought, you know, I love them both. I'll save the sand for later. Anywho, that's enough of an intro. That was quite a chatty intro, wasn't it? I'll let you get on and watch the video. I am going to leave this as a kind of an extended get ready with me, so it will be quite a chatty one. You guys loved it when I did this before. Enjoy. Okay, I am going to start off with this e.l.f. smudge pot in gold. I'm taking this onto a flat synthetic brush and placing that all over the lid, making sure that I keep under the crease of the lid there. I'm also making sure to push that product right into the corner of the eye using this precise flat brush and also making sure that I reach the, the outer corner of the eye properly. I'm then going to take a clean buffing brush and buff out the edges of this smudge pot. This is not only gonna act as a base for the eyeshadow that I'm placing next, but also you'll be able to see a tiny hint of that gold through the eyeshadow and just above it as well. So it's a nice sort of transition gradient color there by the crease and it will help to blend out that eyeshadow that we are going to place next onto the eyelid. That eyeshadow is by Milani. It is this bronzy, beautiful, deep color. I'm gonna take that onto another flat. This is a smaller brush because I wanted some more precision with this eyeshadow and I'm just dabbing that all over that e.l.f. smudge pot. I wanted this to match with the dress. I can't help it, you guys. I have to go matchy-matchy with something and I didn't want anything too harsh or too strong to be the focal point of the makeup because I just wanted it to be about the soft feminine eyes with the beautiful lashes and really just keep it to that and keep everything else quite minimal. So there aren't very many eyeshadows used either. In fact, we are kind of done with the eyeshadow. I'm just blending out this bronze into the gold at the crease there and just redefining the edge Okay, now I am taking this Inglot eyeliner. This is a gel eyeliner by Inglot. I've raved about it so many times. I'm using this as the eyeliner for today's look because I want a very deep jet black and I want something that's not going to shift during the evening. The only downside I have to say with this gel eyeliner is that it is so incredibly budge proof. They have to go over this with my makeup remover a number of times before it actually comes out. I am also tight lining with this along my upper lid. And then I'm using a makeup removing wipe 
just to remove the residue of that eyeliner from my eyelashes because I really dislike the feeling of that eyeliner in particular because it's quite thick and quite clumpy and very difficult to remove later so whilst it's wet I'm just wiping it off with a makeup remover. Okay my eyebrows I am going to be filling in with this galactic eyeshadow. It's a very deep brown. It's going to look a little bit strange when I first put it on because it isn't as dark as my brows but it will blend in well later. In fact they were ever so slightly too dark for my liking by the end of this look. I would prefer for them to be filled in with my Arde brow fiber. My absolute favorite brow product is the Arde brow fiber that we have developed for Arde Cosmetics. I have misplaced it in between the traveling and the weddings. I cannot find it so I've been forced to use alternative methods to fill in my brows and I am missing my brow fiber so much. So it took me a little while to fill in my brows today because it's been a while since I used a powder product. I've literally only been using that Arde brow fiber and it's so much quicker to do as well. I really did grow a unique appreciation for that product by the end of today's video because I realized it was taking me ages to fill them in. I was like, come on. And then I'm brushing them over with this tiny broken eyebrow brush. It's broken, but it works well. An oldie, but definitely a goodie. I'm blending out the edges of my brows and just helping to distribute that color all through the brow evenly, at least towards the tail and the mid part, keeping the front of the brow slightly lighter, just that it looks a bit more natural. I'm now going to curl my lashes and add, ta-da, my gorgeous Lashinary eyelashes in Monroe Flick. Here they are. You can see they increased in density towards the end. Marilyn Monroe actually used to wear demi lashes, which is just short lashes just on the outer corner of the eye. But I find that that kind of gives me, at least on my eyes, an uneven look. So I like for there to still be a slight emphasis to the rest of the lashes and then an extra boost at the outer corner. I absolutely love these lashes. Anywho. We are now going to move on to the NYX Wonder Pencil. I am running this along my lower waterline. I have, like I said, kept the eyes quite simple. I didn't want anything too dramatic. Okay, for my base, this is the Arde Foundation. I am building this very, very slowly in tiny amounts. You can barely see the foundation as it goes onto my skin and I very cleverly managed to hide half my face. I'm sorry, I didn't realize that the angle of the camera with this mirror holding position is not going to work. But there you go. It's just easier for me to do rather than to keep a mirror at a distance. I am ever so slightly short sighted. And so when I hold a mirror closer to my face, it's just such a faster process for me to put makeup on. For my concealer, I am using two concealers. This is the Sensual Skin Enhancer by Kevin Oquan. Use this very sparingly, ladies, because it can cake up quite easily around the eyes. So I'm mixing two shades together and then dabbing that under my eyes and blending out with quite a dense brush. The reason I've used a denser brush as opposed to a slim or a thinner stippling brush is because the brush will sort of absorb a lot of the product as well. And with this concealer in particular, it helps to not have too much of it sticking around because it will just sort of start to settle into the lines after a while. So I find that the best way to deal with this concealer is to blend it out as much as possible with a thick brush and keep minimal amounts, just as much as you need. For my contouring, I'm using two Arde contour sticks, a lighter shade along the bridge of my nose and a darker shade along the hollows of my cheeks and also along my jawline, which I cleverly hid again, sorry, with the mirror. You can see I'm blending it out with a synthetic brush. I find these brushes are really good to blend out cream products because it ensures that the edge of the product is well blended out and that the brush doesn't soak up too much of the product as well. So I use the tip of the brush to blend out the line initially and then you'll see me sort of tilt my brush a little bit at an angle and I use the flat side of the brush to blend out the upper edge of that product along the cheek. I then went back to my foundation brush and blended the product out more. And this is because I wanted the overall makeup look to be very soft, very subtle. The lips are gonna be quite nude as well. And so I didn't want there to be harsh contour lines along any plane of my face. I do like that effect on some looks, but today I just wanted to keep everything very soft and blended in. I'm using, this is actually a contour product by Anastasia Beverly Hills. It's her peach color. I love using this as a blush. It is the 
perfect peach. One of the best peaches that I have ever used. And so I really turned to this. It's a no brainer for me when it comes to creating a peachy makeup look. I'm using the 24 karat gold highlighter from the same palette along the tops of my cheekbones. And then time to move on to the lips. I'm using the ColourPop Lippy Sticks. I believe it's called BFF. I'm gonna apply that on my lips first. And then it occurs to me that it's a little bit too bright, a little bit too vibrant there for the rest of the look. So I'm toning it down by using this Urban Decay lip product. This one is called Liar, I believe, or something like that. Something slightly offensive, but it's fine. We're gonna go with it. I'm applying that all over the top to tone down the brightness of that peach. Then it's time to move on to the hijab. I am trying to decide between brown and sand. Really confused. I'm inclined towards the brown. I'm more inclined towards the brown. As you can hear me say. Because I'm used to contrast. Running the idea past hubs. Are there any other browns that you've got in your Bouncing oh. ideas off each other. No to brown. Oh, the dilemma. And then he hands me caramel. And you've already got too much but yellow it, it's on. It's just like it just it blends so there's just something about this. I want to eat it up. Okay, sand. I'm gonna put you aside and I'm gonna find an outfit to wear with this to one of these nice occasions so I can accessorize it and make it look extra special. I love this colour. Is this colour not absolutely gorgeous? Yeah, it's, it's not like a proper yellow, it is a true sand. It's flattering as well. Alright, so we went for caramel in the end. I'm gonna pop that on the top of my head pin that down on each side just above my ear using slides or bobby pins if you're from the US of A. I'm going to flip the hijab over the top of my head and then struggle a little bit with that neck scarf. So I then go and remove the neck scarf but you can see what I did there. I just put the wing under my chin there and I'm pinning it onto the other side just to hold it in place. I'm then going to take that side of the hijab around my head, create a fold this is me really just playing around with the hijab because although initially I was going to do my normal signature hijab style, I then decided that I wanted something that blended in better with that floral pattern along the chest area. So I took out that first flip that I did and moved over more of the fabric because I didn't want too much of it hanging around near the back. I wanted to keep it quite simple towards the back and then create a pattern towards the front of the hijab. So that's why I've brought over more of the fabric because I didn't want any more folds going along the top of the head. And then on the other side, I start off by twisting the hijab, then bringing it around the head, making sure my neck's covered, and then trying to figure out what to do with the rest of it. This is my thinking phase. Hmm, okay, let's pin this down here. I'm reaching and pinning this from the inside. And then I want to do something with the rest of that wing there. So I begin to twist it to create a floral sort of pattern. And then usually I use a no snag hijab pin to secure my hijab. However, on this occasion, I've used a straight hijab pin very carefully because it was difficult to reach inside this dress. I'm adding my hand daisy chain and my chain ring from Pal Daisy. And I'm keeping the rest of it quite simple. That's it. Because it's a bright color, I didn't want to add too many accessories. It was a Walima occasion on which everyone was very dressed up. So the dress itself was the statement part of the outfit. I wanted to keep everything else toned down, peachy, nude along the lips. I just fell in love with these colors. I don't normally go for such bright color combinations. I tend to contrast my scarf with my outfit. So if my outfit's brighter or louder, so to speak, I tend to tone it down with my hijab. But on this occasion, I really could not resist the matching and the caramel was just so beautiful. The outfit is from BB London. I shall put a link to their website as well in the description box under this video, along with links to everything else, to my hijab. I'll put details for my makeup, Lashinary, which is about to launch in just a few days. Very, very ecstatic to finally be launching that and that's about it really. Thank you all so much for your support. I hope that you enjoyed this Get Ready With Me video. Give it a thumbs up if you did. And back to you, Amina, in your filming room. So this is the final look. I really hope that you enjoyed watching my video today, lovelies. Give it a thumbs up if you did. If you want to see some more Get Ready With Me videos, definitely comment below. Thumbs up the video, subscribe to me. Subscribe button is down there. If you're not subscribed already, I usually upload every Wednesday and Saturday. New videos here on my channel, Amina Kin. If you'd like to watch some more videos in the meantime, then why don't you click on 
that window over there to my right. In there, I shall be looking for you another video of mine. Go and enjoy that if you wish, and in a moment, I shall be disappearing from this window, after which you will be faced with another video option. I shall be off now, you can hear my children are calling me, we are going to make our way to the venue for the Walima event, and I will be catching you guys very soon. Take care of yourselves, please keep me in your thoughts. Toodles!